showcased in MVJ9 is bodybuilding superstar Sean Paul Jenkins. At 24 and 168 pounds, he captured top middleweight honors at the 1985 United States Championships at Las Vegas. This win qualified Sean for competition in the World Games, the prestigious international sports event held every four years. In London, Sean was victorious. He was voted top middleweight bodybuilder in the world. Today, Muscle Video Journal takes you to Super Bodies Gym, owned by Phil Endomano in Costa Mesa, California. We're here today to talk to the 1985 NPC middleweight United States bodybuilding champion, Sean Jenkins. When did you first discover you had an aptitude for this sport? You know, my mom tells me a story. I was, I was two years old and she took me to the doctor because she thought I was deformed. She took me to the doctor and said, where all these bulges come from? What's wrong with this? I'm serious. You mean you were a muscular baby? Man, I've got pictures of me posing when I was four years old. I look the same as I look right now just as a child. I was like... All right, Sean right here for Digital Muscles. Where are they now? I'm joined by my namesake, my predecessor, <laughs> Sean Paul Jenkins, right? Sean Paul Jenkins. I said what S-E-A-N, the real way to spell it. They screwed, they screwed up the spelling, but that's okay. Listen, man, I got started in bodybuilding in 1983, and literally I blinked and I saw you coming up. It was 1985 that you turned pro? Yeah, yeah. So Tell I, us about that. So I won the, the, the um, middleweight USAs, and then at that time, you had to win a, um, a world championship to turn pro, and so that qualified me for the World Games, which comes every four years. And so I went to England and won the world games and actually that was the same year um Barry DeMay turned pro we turned pro at the same time okay so let's back up you won the USA and the universe at the same year was that 1985 85 yeah um yeah. why did I want to think that David Hawk was somewhere in he there? was because he was on my team oh okay so the American team went to yeah, that yeah and did every winner win the pro card everyone except um Matt Mendenhall Matt <laughs> <laughs> poor Matt <laughs> poor Matt 19... I mean everybody Donald yeah. Oliveira, I mean, all of us turned pro that year. Yeah, on, on Monday Night Muscle, Bob Chick and I did a, a an article or an interview about the best that never was. And yeah. un unfortunately, Matt Mendenhall was on that list. 1982, yeah. second place to Lee Haney. Yeah. In the 87 Nationals, I competed against Matt Mendenhall yeah. and he didn't make it. And yeah. then Bob Chick was telling me he was competing against him in like 91. Yeah. It just never happened. He was good. He had it all. He was he good. had a He had a good look. He had all the lines. I mean, back in our time, it was it was about aesthetics and size. Yeah, and, you know. And when you say back all. in our time, where was the <laughs> World Championships that you won? Uh, where was that 1985 show? So it was um, Wimbledon, um, um, England. England. How yeah. was that? Was that your first time out of the country? Yeah. So yeah. tell us how you got started in bodybuilding, because it seemed like I, I came in and you were already there. So I used to play football. And my, oh, that's right. Yeah, my, my biggest dream was the NFL, man. I, I just, I was destined to be yeah. running back. And that's what, and then the crazy part about it is I really didn't participate in organized sports until I was a junior in high school. And where was this at? What part of the world? Um, So I grew up in um, Orange County. So I okay. went to Capistrano Valley High School. Oh, yeah. So, so yeah. some other guys came out of there, right? Was oh, yeah. Marinovich out of there? Oh, yeah. No. So I I played with his 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 older brother. Oh, Todd Marinovich, yeah. a former quarterback at USC yeah. and the Raiders. Yeah. And, ah, Raider boy. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but Capo no. Valley. Okay. Yeah, so, but so, and so, I got I got hurt, you know, in the North South All Star Game, and the real deal was, I went to a lot. I went to five different high schools. Yeah. And it wasn't, well, you know, my my mom and dad were split up, and so I I literally traveled every two years since I was five years old. Mm. And so I was always wow. playing catch up in school, and at a certain point, I stopped going to school. Yeah. Realistically, and I blew up on the football field. I was probably one of the most recruited um, running backs. I saw in the, the nation. newspaper clips. Yeah, seen some things. Yeah, and but I graduated high school with a D minus average. Wow. Yeah. So which means that no scholarship for me. No structure. Yeah. So and then I got hurt playing football. I went to JC. I got hurt, and then um, I refused to have surgery on my knee. So I figured I could rehab it myself. You know, because I could do everything. Yeah. <laughs> Who's one of your idols playing football? I mean, you, you watch, did you see some running backs that you loved back it's in the all day? about Walter P, baby. Walter P, hey, sweetness. <laughs> sweetness. Yeah, Walter, Walter P. P. And I had a chance yeah, to run into Anthony Davis from the USC really? Trojans. I met him. Him too. Yeah. So, so, so one, one of my coaches that coached me yeah. used to coach Anthony Davis. Yeah. And he taught me how to run. He was And the so man. he used to take me on my downtime at school for a whole year and, and we studied AD. Yeah. And I and that's how I learned how to he run. He was one of the best college running backs oh, ever, dude, man. Oh, dude, he was, he, he was, was the uh, man. 
That is crazy that you said the all North South All Star game. So my career ended the way yours did. I never got to play in the game because I got hurt in practice <laughs> on the way to the game. Really? Yeah, and that's that kicked me into bodybuilding. So is that what happened? So during during my rehabilitation, learning how to walk without yeah. pain, it took me two years to be able to walk without pain. Wow. And how, so what was the injury? How did how did it happen? It's a really bad hyperextension of the knee. Okay. And so I I kept training. I started training. Started training, and I was good. And then all of a sudden. I was, you know, I was 22, 23 years old. My body just blew up. Blew up right. And so I went to go work out in this gym and the guy that owned the gym was a former professional bodybuilder. And he looked at me and he was like, and he was from France. He goes, he goes, you, my friend could be a champion. Oh. And I was like, bro, I just want to train. I just, you know, and so he was putting on a, uh, um, what was it? The golden cup. Uh, some, Is this some... Manu Pluton? That's it. Holy crap. Yeah. We're both from Orange County. <laughs> Manu so, yeah. Platon from France. That's it. He put on the yeah. California Gold, Gold Cup, Cup, which that's was it. the one I first. Yeah. So, first so, wow, so, that's crazy. So he asked me. He goes, he goes, would you want to help me? You know, do the show? And I was like, yeah, well, I ain't got nothing else to do. So I'm helping him. I'm carrying trophies across the stage, and I'm looking at the stage. And I'm going, God. Yeah. I'm also. I'm feeling magic. <laughs> I'm, and I've never been to a bodybuilding show before. And so the, I'm watching the show. And all of a sudden, man, I started feeling what I used to feel when I used to run. I was like, oh, man, this is this is about something. Nice. And so I started looking at the guys competing. I was like, I look better than these guys now. Yeah. And all of a sudden, it just clicked. And I was like, this is this is because, you know, just like you, I had a strong desire to be famous. Yeah. And I think that, once it's in you. Oh, dude, you it, like play football. You, you just change the channels. Yeah. And so and that's what and so that drive just took me and I just, you know, my body and my mind, you know. So in this sport, it's more about a mental thing than a physical thing. If you right. got a physical and a mental, bro, sky's the limit. Yeah, no, and he's picked the right sport because this was not a sport with a bunch of tall men in it. <laughs> I mean, when you talk about Platts, Samir, Chris Dickerson, I mean these are guys that came just before you arrived on the scene. Yeah. Um, they weren't that big. No, and that's who I modeled myself after. Yeah, too. I mean, obviously, when Lee Haney came in 84, he elevated the Olympia status, but you're still working on that pro card. You get the pro card yeah. out of the country. What did your family think? You're ta you've got a passport and you're leaving the country. Yeah. This isn't football. What did, what did everybody think about, about so, that? So, my father was everything to me. Yeah. I'm assuming your father's not with us. Yeah, I lost mine in 2010. Yeah, so, isn't it? Yeah. How long ago has your your dad passed on? So, so my dad died of allergic reaction to some medication he took. And, re and so it was so funny too. So I was on tour and I was at Juliet Bergman's house. Oh, Juliet Bergman. And I got a phone call that my dad was dying. Oh. And he took this medication. This is in the 80s. Yeah, so this was like 80, 89, mm -hmm. 80, so, and he died within 10 days. And um, it was so funny. I do things for myself, but I didn't realize how much I did stuff for my dad. Right. right. And I remember after that, I was doing a TV commercial for the Hearns Leonard 2 fight. Yeah. And me and my dad were big fight fans. Oh, yeah. And I was backstage in between shoots or whatever, and I got ready to pick up the phone and grab my dad to tell him, Dad, Pops, you never know where I am. And when I grabbed the phone, you realized I was done competing at that point. Wow, your life totally went I was, the other way. It just, it just hit me, man. I was just like. That's pretty life-changing stuff. Uh, impactful. Yeah. No, and, it is. It is. And so being a dad. You know, because my, like my boys, I know I am everything to my, because I have three sons. Yeah. And so, I mean, I don't know about you, but I hear my father every day. All the time. Absolutely. Yeah. So, yeah. and I'm not, I never really, my father was, a, I mean, I mean, I'm sure my yeah. father was 6'4". Wow. Yeah. So I was wondering, where do, where's my height? Yeah, you got Jack, you got Jack <laughs> man. You got your mom's genetics, It was, genetics, a, it was a rough night for my pops. <laughs> you know what I mean? But yeah. I always wanted to make my father proud. Well, I gotta say, man, just based on where you're at and looking from the outside, Dr. Sean Jenkins, yeah. chiropractic business yeah. for how many years now? 23. Out here in Arizona. Yeah. Uh, a lot of people walk away from bodybuilding and try to figure out what they wanna do. You became very cerebral. I mean, you actually are changing lives. Oh, dude, you have no idea. But before we get to where we're at today, let's go back in the bodybuilding world because that transition out, obviously your dad was very inter instrumental in you walking away. Yeah. You did have an opportunity to compete in some shows as a pro. I did. And so, and so it was, so bodybuilding, so I'm a really, 
easy kind of going person and I take things as they come. And so I was a bodybuilder, but it wasn't who I was okay. or who I am. I, I, a lot of identifying problems yeah, in our that, sport that like is, that. That is not, I mean, it's something yeah. that I did, just like football. Yeah, it's something, something that I did. did. It's not, it wasn't my identity. But you did it at a very high level. I do everything. So this is, so there's some people that are the best at everything they do, just right. like you. Mm -hmm. So, but it's a mind thing. Yeah. So you can't have a thing without the thought. Right. Once you have the thought, you have the thing because the desire drives you until you don't. You right. know what I'm saying? And then you move on to something No, and then else. it's just, and you shift gears. So I I literally competed four or five times before I turned pro. Mm -hmm. So I did, and I wasn't- That's really, fast. I wasn't encapsulated in the bodybuilding community because I was not around it. Right. So I didn't really comprehend what what was taking place. But who was some of the guys coming up back then? Because I saw Mike you- Mike Christian, baby. Mike Christian, 84 national champion. Yeah, Mike, Mike, um, Mike. So, so what what happened for me was, and I made a I made a lot of mistakes in bodybuilding. Okay. So I I turned pro like that. Nobody knew who I was, and I couldn't get anybody to give me any coverage. Yeah. So Nevu and Balik at that time were having yeah were having problems with Weeder because they were breaking away from him at that time. For Iron Man. And I'm right. thinking, dude, I just won the world championships. I'm begging you guys to come take my pictures. Mm -hmm. And so in my mind, I was like, I gotta go bigger. Yeah. So I'm thinking I'm gonna go to the Olympia. Which That's was right. a huge mistake. Was that 86 or 85? That was 85. So you turned pro in 85, went to the Olympia in 85. Yes. Yes. But this, but so this is the deal. This is what a lot of people don't believe. So when I turned pro, I was 100% natural. Wow. And I was. Yeah, because you came off the, the, the contest was drug tested, right? No, no. no it wasn't. Not okay. back then. I was just scared to take drugs. Yeah. And, but so I was thinking, I won, I won this stuff without anything. I'm going to go to the Olympia and just beat everybody's pants off. Yeah, you're Dude. riding high for the moment. Yeah, well, you know. The Olympia's take, a different ballgame. Well, well, not even that. My blood chemistry is so hypersensitive, a little bit is a lot to me. Okay. I showed up so bloated. Yeah. Bro, it was You were smooth. I was beyond to look like you baby had the, shit. you had all the shape. I had baby shit skin. I just thought you might have <laughs> went off the diet because no, you competed. No, no. How far apart was the... The World Championships and the Olympia for you was it like a month apart or was no? It, it was months. It was months. probably like three or four months. That's it was a, it, it was a mistake. Okay, it was a huge mistake. It was a huge mistake, and I made so many mistakes. Yeah, you know, and it's it so it took me years to learn how to use synthetics. Okay, and by the time I figured out how to use them, I wasn't competing anymore. You moved on. <laughs> you moved on because you studied it. I right? was done. I was, and then the other thing was, I made a deal with myself that if I wasn't where I wanted to be within five years in the professional sport, okay. I was gonna move on because I wasn't gonna be one of those guys that was gonna chase the carrot like a lot of us do, where you need a little bit more size, a little bit more, you need more calves, you need this, yeah, here. And, the then it, and it never changes. And then you turn around and you're 40 and you got no money, you got no career, you got no life, and you're either selling drugs or selling your ass. Yeah. And I wasn't about none of that We've shit. seen a lot of that happen yeah. in our industry. It's, no. it's ripe with, uh, with kind of people that lose their way. No. Uh, but you had something to turn to. So how did you turn to chiropractic of all things? So, so I used to train people. Yeah, you were a trainer yep, for a yep, while. Yep, uh -huh. I used to train people. And I noticed that people that had injuries, if I could correct the muscle imbalance, they would get better. Right. And so I started experimenting on people. And, you know, I can look at you and tell you what exercises you're doing because, you know, it's just it's just so easy. And chiropractic wasn't really a thing in the late 80s. Like, no. it wasn't there yet. No, I mean, it was there, but it wasn't. So it wasn't my thing. And so I didn't really know too much about, about chiropractic, but ever since I was a kid, I always wanted to be able to put my hands on people and heal them. Okay. And that was it. All I was right. like, I was like, and then, you know, my ego stepped in and, you know, Dr. Sean sound pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It does sound good. I see that. Like, Dr. Sean, right. what the hell? But, but so the big deal was this. And so in life, most people run from fear and run from pain. You have to learn how to embrace it. Okay. And so me going back to school, graduating high school at a, with a 1.6 average That's meant huge. that I had to go back to school. Ground zero. Baby, I went yeah. back and did remedial shit. Yeah. I did air, I mean, and so that was me facing my biggest fears because I had to prove to myself that I could do it. Yeah. And I just didn't do it. I did it well. I think your football background set you up for that because you were playing at such a high level, then it was gone. Yeah. And then you were doing the bodybuilding thing and then it was gone. Yeah. And so you kind of reinvent yourself and you just dove in and you became you know, what you were in football and what you were in bodybuilding. It was such a small window for you in bodybuilding, but it was impactful. Yeah. You were there, 
1985, right on the heels of Mike Christian. You were there in the Matt Mendenhall years. Yeah. Uh, Jean Paul Guillaume, remember him? Oh, and no, I competed against him. Sean, Mike Ashley was coming up right around that time yeah. in '86. Yeah, same, same, same. All, I mean, and so that was that was that was a great time to be in that bodybuilding era because just like I haven't seen you forever. Yeah, it's been a minute. But there is a bond between us, mm -hmm. and so. Back then, if you became pro, or if you were a high caliber athlete, we all recognized what it took to get there. Yeah, because we walked in the same path. So yeah. we all, I mean, and so, and there was a brotherhood there too, because I'll I never forget. Um, Mike came, I never even know. I'm, so when I when I won the USA, Mike gave me my Chris, my, my trophy. trophy. right. And so I, had never, I didn't know Mike before. I just knew him from the magazines and he was, you know, like a brother. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, he reached out to me and asked me, he's like, dude, do you need anything? Do you need this? Do you need that? And I was just like, that's what this shit is about. You know, it's so interesting. I do these Where Are They Nows and I, I'm always injecting myself in it because I lived it. Yeah. When you were doing it, I was following that path. And Mike Christian, 1984 national champion. I was a high school and senior or senior in high school. Um, I went on and won the California in 87. And he literally pulled me inside and goes, "You're gonna be the, you're gonna be the man." And he's like, "You're the man." You're... I'm like, "Holy crap! It's my Christian, yeah. I'm my '84 national yeah. champion." Yeah. But, and it came full circle in those five, four or five months between the Cal in '87, the Nationals in '87. He told me to eat fish, do cardio, yeah. pose, 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 yeah. pose. I would drive 45 minutes to Gold's Gym. Yeah. I was excited that he would be there waiting to take a look at me in the yeah. posing room. Yeah. And I won the Nationals and got my card. That brotherhood, it, it's generational. But that's what we are supposed to do. Right. But, but not just in the bodybuilding world, but as human beings. Right. And so in my office, that's how my office is run. Yes. And so I have people coming to me. I mean, I mean... The stuff that goes on in my office is phenomenal. Yeah. I get so many miraculous things going on. And so for me... Because you see the fruit of your labor when you help someone and they recover and they get better. I mean, kind of like when I got LASIK eye surgery. Yeah. It, it was a whole different world for me from the perspective of the doctor putting his hands oh, on Oh, yeah. Me. No, it is... So grateful. It is life altering. Wow. And so that's what I'm saying. So it's, it's just the reward. I mean, there's not a day that goes by that somebody doesn't tell me they love me. Oh. And it's gotta feel good. Oh, dude, you have no idea. And, it's and different the from kids. bodybuilding. When you're walking around with muscles yeah. and people are admiring you, yeah. that's different. But when people genuinely yeah. appreciate what you do for them, that's a whole different type of it love. Is, it is. And so for me, my whole, I live a life of service. Mm -hmm. And all those kids that come see me, they're my children. Nice. All those grandmas that come see me, they're my grandma. And it, that's generational because they tell their family and friends and they come see you. Well, that's why I'm so busy. Bad, I yeah. practice in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. And I am probably one of the busiest guys. I see over 100 people a day. I think you said you got like 10,000 patients over, like you can count, count I, the numbers. I, I see at least, I touch at least 10,000 people a year. Wow. So, and I, but the, you know, I only work three days a week. <laughs> <laughs> And so, right now, COVID has it yeah. slowed down with the whole. Oh COVID yeah, thing, yeah. Sure. Things so things things slowed yeah. down a little bit because I shut down because I wasn't really sure what's going on. Mm -hmm. So it is. My office has changed a little bit, but I'm still busy. I'm Sean, still you're 60 years old, and it's a crazy number because when we're coming up, it's almost like that number where your grandparents, right? Yeah. That, that's that's the <laughs> stage of your life. But you look like you're like in your 40s. You know, you're still I, training hard, or what are you doing? So my train, and so this is the deal. Back in the day, he's 60 years old. <laughs> oh my god! So me and JJ used to train together. JJ Marsh, former Mister USA. And so we used to go to Howard's Gym. And Howard's Gym, we, holy remember? crap! Fountain Valley, I yeah, think it was. Yeah, yeah. Wow. So we we would open the gym. We were there at a quarter to four every Don morning. Don Howard, yeah. And dude, we used to tear that shit up, boy. It was a war. JJ was known for training at like two and three and four in the morning, yeah. and you knew, you were drugging on through some of that stuff, right? Well, so because we both had to be at work at six. That's true, right? Because yeah. he was he yeah. was heavy. In, he actually won the USA, I think, in 86. Yeah, the year after. Yeah, right yeah. right behind so, you guys you know, were right there at so the same you know, time. So it's so funny because we used to dream together. And so we would train and just beat the shit out of yeah. there, each other. And it's like, you know, one day we're going to be on we gonna be on top. One day we're going to be in France. One day we're going to be. And so it was so funny. What were you? I can't remember the year. But him and I were sitting in Nice. Nice, sitting, France. We were sitting in the, on, the, on the Riviera. Going, holy shit. No, we were sitting there and we're eating. Yeah. And it hit me. Come to Jesus. And I bro. looked at Jay. I go, bro. We're here. I go, I go, take a take a breath. Like he goes, what you talking about? I go, where are we right now? He go, I go, you a pro? I'm a pro. We sitting here in the fucking niece. <laughs> we, I go, we the shit. That is crazy. And, we, and it was just. Ah. You know what's crazy about it is because it, it's true for all of us. I and mean, yeah. we have those moments where we're like, 
bodybuilding brought me here. Like yeah. the sweat equity you put in the gym, you don't know where it's gonna take you yeah. until you're there. Yeah. And that moment that you're talking about, I shared that moment with so many other bodybuilders yeah. around the world because we're even bigger now than we were oh, back yeah. when you retired. Yeah. We're all over Dubai, China, Japan, and Germany. I mean, and we're all brought together and we can kind of look at each other and feed off of that energy because we know we all kind of travel similar paths to yeah. get there. And uh, I talked to Jim Mannion this morning. He told me to tell you hello. And it's funny because he was there when you were doing all this stuff back at in running the NPC. So he, him and his son were the one running this around when I won, you know, I know they hate me because I'll <laughs> never forget. Huh. So we're driving around, Jimmy and-, and, and JM? Yeah. yeah. And so we're driving around in a taxi and I must have ate something dude that upset my stomach. <laughs> Bro. Here it comes. Did you drop the bomb? Dude, I was farting like a machine gun. <laughs> <laughs> and they kept, it was like, roll out the oh window. They was literally about to throw me out the car. And I was like, oh. I can't help it. So they, they will never forget you. <laughs> oh, no, dude. Very impressive. It was impressive. Yeah, but but like I said, so. So you were there with JJ in France, and it was like, boom, you guys made it. So it, it had its moments. My biggest joy in competitive bodybuilding was being able to see the world yeah. and go places where people welcome me with open arms because literally yeah. i would go to different countries and i could only speak english yeah but they, and there were people there that opened their houses up to me yeah and the the warmth you know was just unbelievable and that's based on the body of work i mean your your art your work was being appreciated respected yeah. Yeah. and they couldn't even tell you how much they love it they could just kind of look at you no but it was service you oh it was it was like i said i i still have warm memories of all that stuff and so I look at our sport today. That's where we were going. So tell me what you see. It's gotta be different, especially from the eyes of a 60 year old. It's yeah. not what it was when you were coming up in your 20s. So this is what it is. It's a money thing right now. Mm -hmm. And so my time, you had to win a national world title to get a pro card, which means there wasn't a lot of pros every year. One or four, you know? Yeah, so there was, there was the, the USAs and there was the Nationals. Right. And the Universe. That was it. There's three ways yeah. to go. Correct. And that was it. And if you, and so if you didn't win the world championship after that, you got to go back down. Yeah. And Start so, over. yeah. So, and now you can get a pro card walking across the street. Yeah. A so, lot, a lot more people participating, right? So, what, so I think what they've done is made it more accessible to the average person because when you and I were coming up, you had to lay a groundwork. And that groundwork took at least eight to 10 years yeah. before you could do something with it. But we, don't we got to recognize the growth though? Because back then it was men's bodybuilding, teenage bodybuilding, yeah. and women's bodybuilding. And now we've got classic, we've got physique, we've got wellness, we have bikini, figure, women's figure. I mean, we have 10 different divisions. So kind of, it's kind of inclusive. But when you do look at the Olympia, for example, if that's the benchmark, the winners, the competitors are legit. Like yeah. they are legit. Yeah. I, I think somehow or another, they have to help people get through the system to make room for everybody else that's coming up, which makes it a little more confusing, probably less respected too. Yeah, less respected. But I mean, the bottom line is- Fewer superstars, fewer superstars. Yeah, and shorter careers. Shorter careers, because it's more inclusive. But I mean, isn't that the evolution of everything? I mean- um, Things get watered down as time goes on. That's all, that's, that's unfortunately how it is. But like I said, Anytime that you can put forth your best effort, because so anytime you get ready for a show, right? I don't care what happens. You have you have you have walked that walk. It's a journey, and it is a vision quest. Uh -huh. And if you have accomplished everything that you set forth out to, I don't care where you place, you're a winner. Yes. So well, you're literally competing against yourself, and depending upon where you are and what level you are, you can win or lose. But if you can walk away and say, "I've given it my all." It is, it is, it, it's a good trip. Well, chiropractic is one of those, I don't know, it's, it's still one of those uh, industries where when is it right to go to a chiropractor? When you're injured, is it preventative or is it in concert with your, you know, just general maintenance? So, so most people think chiropractic is about pain. So chiropractic is way more than that. So chiropractic is a restoration of the central nervous system. And being that, you, the, the, you know, the nervous system lives in the spine. If the spine is aligned and the curves are normal, there's no increased pressure on the nervous system. Okay. And so you come in, you get adjusted, it frees up the nervous system and pain goes away like that. The problem is if you have any regular curvature in the spine over an extended period of time, it's going to cause irregular wear and tear on the disc and you're going to get arthritis. Okay. And so you get the same stuff reoccurring. And so if you're an athlete and you're doing repetitive motions 
things are going to break down. So it's imperative to keep fluidity in, in the segments. So when the fluidity disappears, that's when it becomes a problem in between the discs. Yeah. So so it only takes the weight of a dime on one of those nerves to cause problems. Right. And so so there's a there's what 10, 15% of the nerves in your body have to do with sensation. The rest is pretty much how your body's functioning. Okay. And so say for instance you have issues between L4 and L5. So you'll have pain, possibly pain radiating down your legs, but it also, those nerves also go to your large intestine, your kidney, your bladder, your reproductive so organs, and the prostate. Effect, yeah. And so in the latter stages of dysfunction, your body literally starts turning off. Mm. And that's what I see in a lot of my older patients. And so when they start coming in for, to get adjusted or whatever, well, they stop peeing in the bed. Erectile dysfunction, that shit goes away. Mm -hmm. I, I can't tell you how many women that couldn't get pregnant over a couple months, they come back and they're, they're pregnant. So, are, so when do you go? Like, is this part of a, just a general maintenance like I'm um, well it depends I'm, on how, how healthy you want to be so most of us equate health by how we look, look on the outside correct <clears throat> we live realistically the world is an inside out job skeletal yeah so nothing functions without neurological input and so if you keep the nervous system freed up you leave this planet when you want to mm -hmm. so and so this is so there's a sidebar so you know that um the Spanish flu epidemic in the 1900s so we're reliving it now. Well, so so this is this is what and this is really important. So chiropractic was illegal back then. Okay. And so after the epidemic transpired, the government went back and and reviewed certain populations where people actually lived and where the the first chiropractic college was and there was a couple other places. Well, chiropractors had set up in town halls and were adjusting people two and three times a day. Those people were, were living. Okay. And so what happens is, and they did a small study on some HIV patients. When you get adjusted in your middle back, it raises your CD4 count, your white blood cell count by 40%. So if we go to a chiropractor uh, as a beginner, is one of the first things you do, um, do I get an x-ray of my back to see if I would recommend a, and so. Body scan. So, so this, is a, this is a disclaimer here. There's good and bad and everything. Yeah. Like I <laughs> I wouldn't know if my no. have a curvature of my spine. No. So I, 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 I get people from all of the United States and Canada and they've been seeing chiropractors for years and they come into my office and they've never experienced anything that they experience in my office. Is, are which they is experiencing bad. pain? No, or? I'm just talking about, so we do a complete exam. Okay. You want to do a complete x-ray. You want to show the patient what's going Before on. Before you start oh, working. hundred percent. So how you, if, so we're in Arizona, how are we going to get to California if I don't have a map? Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. So, the x-rays determine what's fixable and what's patchable. And that's where you start. And that's where we go. And so it's specific, chiropractic is a specific adjustment to a specific segment to a, to affect a certain thing. Okay. And so most people come, want to get out of pain. I can get you out of pain. Pain is easily resolved. Yeah. So a car accident, a sprain strain, a sports injury, that's a musculoskeletal thing, but it's also a neurophysiological thing or if it's left alone. And so you can change that stuff. But if you're looking about longevity, if you're looking about quality of life yeah you want to keep the nervous system freed up and based upon your activity level and the curvature in your spine and the degeneration in your spine determines how often you see a chiropractor I was gonna say how and often it's, and it's not based upon how you feel like for me yeah so I get an hour and a half massage every Thursday. Wow. I get adjusted three times a week. I do non-surgical decompression, which is for my patients that have disc herniation or spinal stenosis or advanced arthritis to keep the segments fluid. Yeah. I do, you know, I do, I have laser. I do, I do everything, but there's a reason why I look and feel the way that I do yeah. is because I'm proactive. And I, and the other thing is I know a lot of shit. And the other thing is I fucked up a lot of shit in my body. Yeah. So you're like, you're, um, you're taking care of the engine instead of just waxing the car on yeah, the outside. Exactly. And so, I mean, so when we were training, in my mind back in the day, big weights equated big muscles. Yeah, but there's a lot of compression on those compound squats and deadlifts. And so I have disc herniations from L1 down to L5. Okay. And some of that's football, some of that's jumping out of cars and right. buildings and, yeah. you know, 600 pound squats and, yeah. you know, and so if I don't keep it up, I'm in a lot of pain. Yeah, it could, it could yeah. tighten up. And no, like it just, get it just dude, I'm telling you, it's a lot of pain. It's just, you know, so that's what I'm saying. Well, it's so, good that you know that because you're able to pay it forward. Like you, you could, you're a, a victim of your own circumstance. You oh, yeah. identify and the problem. So, and so, so I believe all doctors should have some amount of pain because it makes them a more 
empathetic doctor. Isn't that like a drug counselor? <laughs> like the, oh, yeah. the drug counselor, you want to know that he was on the floor you know, yeah. kissing the curb. Yeah, because you know what I'm talking about. And understands, about. yeah. 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 So it was a guy that comes out of prison to help reform yeah. people. So, but not, and so when I see my patients, and so especially my younger patients, and so when I see kids, because I see a lot of kids, um, I, do, I do with a lot of, a lot of athletes. Yeah. And so when I see them, it's easy to change their patterns. You can literally change the course of somebody's life. Yeah. And so, so for you and I, it's more maintenance. For children, it's more preventative. Okay. Because you can change the course of somebody's life. And so, for like I said, I, I, the bad part about my, my, my profession is that people don't really know what chiropractic You're is. You're always teaching them, right? You're yeah, always well, I'm always education. teaching no matter where I am. And so, and that's, and so my, my office is my church. Yeah, yeah. And so I, I base my life off of God's laws. Everything, you know, I mean, you know me. I will give you the shirt off my back mm -hmm. because as long as you're giving, you'll never struggle to survive. And that's why my hands are always full because yeah. I'm always giving. Yeah. And so, and, and it makes me happy. Yeah. And, and if you're happy, there's you never no work stress. You work, never work a day in that's your life. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I don't like getting up every, you know, a few days a week going to work, but when I'm there, I love it. Well, you pretty much positioned yourself into something, again, not everybody finds their calling in life. Um, I'm still living mine because this is what I do. Yeah. Talking to people like you, watching yeah. the journey, watching the new guys coming. I saw Lee Labrada's son in the Olympia a couple last month. Lee Labrada's son competing, competing Are you in serious? the Olympia in Orlando. I was there oh, to, wow. and, and I, I watched Dexter Jackson retire on stage. And of course, Dexter was coming up behind me. So for me, my cup is always running over watching these people's lives evolve right and, and change. And so, when's the last time you were at a bodybuilding show? <laughs> the last time I competed. <laughs> oh my God! So you just walked out, and that, I mean, you see it a little bit online and stuff. I, you can I'm follow not, people. But. So that's what I'm saying. So I I participated in this stuff, but it wasn't who it I wasn't was. Who you were. I was. I mean, so I got. So my wife used to compete, and she was going to do the USA's, and. I decided because she trains with oh, me. Oh yeah, you did mixed pairs back in the day too, right? Yeah, so I did. I did um, a show with Donna Oliveira. Donna Oliveira. Yeah. So wow. that that's a funny story. That is a crazy so, name from the past. So so because she was on my world championship team, and so she yeah eighty five. She was training for the women's pro championship in in Nice. Yep. And um, I was training with a girl. Um, Athena Amos. Let me get some perspective. 85. So in the 80s with mixed pairs, you had Tony Pearson and Tina Plackinger. You had uh, Diana Dennis and uh, Kevin Lawrence. Yeah, Remember yeah, them? Yeah, um, yeah. Of course, you were doing it. J.J. Marsh was doing mixed J pairs. J.J. was in the same show. That's what I'm wow. saying. So that's what I'm saying. So, and I had never done mixed pairs before. Mm -hmm. And so I was training with this girl. We were going to do it. She fell off her diet. And I was like, I, there's no way I could take you with me. Yeah. And I was already training. And... Um, Wayne D'Amelia, I asked him, I go, Wayne, who's going to that show over there? And he told me, Donna, I go, cool. I go, Donna, our bodies are really similar, really right. symmetrical. And so I called her up. I go, would you could would you like to do this show with me? Mm -hmm. And she goes, I'm training for this show anyway. She goes, yeah, we could do it. And so I flew over there and we literally put our routine together the night before. Wow. Our posing suits did not match. <laughs> Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. But we had so much fun. Yeah. And literally we took second place. Wow. And if Impressive. we and if we would have really been on, yeah, you we would have got Tony and Carla. And I'm saying yeah. that now, Tony, because you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Tony loved his <laughs> Tony loved his mixed pairs. That back was his in the thing. Day. It was. But man, it was so much fun. And yeah. so that's what I'm saying. It was so much fun back in those days. And it yeah. was so much love. And you're meeting legends that, you know, I mean Tony won the Mr. Universe in some uh, other federation. Yeah. I don't, don't want to say NAP, I don't know yeah. which federation yeah. it was a natural one. In Vegas last month. He, oh, really? He, he, like uh, 65 or something. Really? Like, yeah, he won. He's still out there doing it, man. Robbie Robinson's still doing it. A lot I of guys doing do that it. diet, man. Yeah, it's a whole other animal. Yeah. But you've done well for yourself. We're out here in uh, Scottsdale, Arizona. And uh, so, how can people get a hold of you if they want to find out more about the chiropractic? Maybe come see you as a patient. So, um, Jenkins Chiropractic, Casa Grande, Arizona. Um, if you need me, I'm there. Just call Dr. Sean, believe me, I got more than you could handle. Man. And so the real deal is, I sell energy, uh -huh. and, I, and I'm giving love out. And so it's easy for me to change the body. Right. The hard part is changing the mind. Yes, the mind is the strongest thing. Dude, and so, and so in life you get two things, you either get what you want or you complain about what you don't have. And so you have to make a decision about what you want to do with all this stuff. Mm -hmm. And so, I see so much stuff 
mental stuff manifest in the physical body. Right. And it's so over, over a certain period of time, because there are energy centers in the body, there's are chakra centers in the body. And it's so amazing how some of the correlation from the energy centers in the body will correlate with their injuries and their dysfunction and their emotional states. So a man thinketh, so he becomes. Oh, yeah. Sean Jenkins, man, <laughs> doing the business out here in Scottsdale. Well, man, it was a great catching up with you. It was a, a wonderful where are they now. We're gonna have a whole lot more coming up uh, in season 2021. We're just getting things started here at digitalmuscle.com. Stay tuned, we're gonna bring you all the latest and the greatest from Blast from the Past. This is Sean Jink, Dr. Sean Jenkins here in Arizona. Peace out, y'all. Digital Muscle, I'm Sean Ray. <laughs>